Okay, with the change in weather, we know the seasons are also changing, so it's time to roll up our sleeves and take at least one step to staying healthier this fall and winter. So I've already gotten my food shot this year, so by default, it's Terry's uh, <laughs> opportunity today. We've asked Dr. Paul Woods from the Spectrum Health Medical Group to come in and talk with us about prevention and where you can find out about clinics. Okay, let's talk about flu shots because uh, are they necessary? Yeah, the uh, uh, CDC recommends that uh, everybody over the age of six months basically gets the flu shot in certain high uh, risk segments of the population especially so. Mm -hmm. So is this a different, every year it's a different formula based on what the CDC is expecting will be the primary risk or the primary strain. How does that whole formula work? It's actually, it's an international group. So there are people from uh, Asia and people from Europe and people from North America that get together and they try to predict based on disease activity and viral activity in other parts of the world what will actually be coming to North America during this flu season and then try to accurately uh, uh, build a vaccine that actually hits those targets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the recommendation is everyone over six months, but there are certain right. people that are especially at risk. It's not everybody. Right, uh, everybody would benefit from it. So if you look at a, at a benefit to an entire population, everybody really should do it. But the people who are at the most risk of complications would be uh, people over the age of 65. Uh, people with chronic disease, uh, pregnant women, and particularly young children as well, uh, uh, frequently are hospitalized with the complications of influenza. And when we talk about influenza and getting sick from the flu, we're not just talking about you know a 24-hour bug. This is actually something that you really don't want to get the flu because you can be sick for a week or more. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, a lot of people view it as, as a minor illness, and, and uh, if anybody's ever had it, they usually don't view it that way anymore. <laughs> no, and no. So it's five to seven days of feeling particularly poor, and I think it's important to understand that there are serious complications, including uh, death in some examples, uh, but certainly people are out of work, and, and we have many hospitalizations as a result of the complications of the disease. Mm -hmm. Throughout the chillier season, I feel like I get a lot of different things that seem to happen every year. I get my flu shot, but what are some of the symptoms of the flu that would be red flags to people to know that, hey, something serious might be coming on? Um, so, yeah, and, and a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between a cold and the flu? Right. And, and uh, I guess it's, uh, it's a matter of degree. Uh, so, you know, a runny nose, a scratchy throat, cough. Uh, high fevers are particularly common with influenza. Uh, again, the cough is a differentiator almost from the cold, which tends to be more up in your head. Uh, really severe weakness and sort of muscle aches and pains are very common with the flu. The sort of, I've been hit by a bus type thing and can't mm -hmm. get off the couch for a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a matter of degree. And people with a cold are usually slowed down a bit. You, people with the flu usually can't do anything. They're just really very sick. And kind of the two key ones that we see, um, you know, we always think about vomiting and diarrhea, but those are only maybe sometimes symptoms that come along with it. Yeah, that's correct. It, it tends to happen more in, in young children and certain viral strains are more likely to produce it than other ones. And I, I remember my mother, whenever I had those particular symptoms, would say you've got the flu, but that's not typically yeah. the flu. The flu is really a respiratory illness. Okay, let's talk about how, how and why it's controversial. Because when I say, hey, I got a flu shot this year, there are so many people that I encounter that say, I will never get a flu shot. What's the other side of this, or what is the fear? Well, I think the fear is a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they got a flu shot and then they got the flu, and so they have that association. And there's a, a Latin term for that, which I won't bring up. Um, but, you know, my comment as a, as a practicing clinician is, well, did you eat breakfast the morning that you got the flu? And then mm -hmm. they say yes. And I said, then does eating breakfast give you the flu? Ah. And, uh, and uh -huh. that, so there's that temporal association. It takes about two weeks for your immunity as a result of the flu shot to actually build up to where it's effective. So if you are exposed to the flu and then you get the flu before the antibody levels actually build up, you will get the flu, and okay. uh, but it's not caused by it. It's a, it's a dead virus that we give in the injection form and, and so it actually cannot give you the flu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have Marcy here. Marcy's with the visiting nurse and so I'm going to roll up my sleeve okay. here and uh, well, well Marcy's giving me my flu shot, why don't you talk about where people can go because not everybody has uh, somebody who's going to come into their uh, place of work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, do we have a good camera shot here, Panny? So at Spectrum Health, we have uh, uh, sort of three uh, types of venues where people can get flu shots. We have uh, Visiting Nurse Association is running clinics, and those sites are available on our website. 
Uh, we have uh, urgent care well centers. You missed, you missed it. I didn't even scream. So the urgent care centers, a lot of urgent pharmacies. Urgent care centers, five Thanks of them mercy. have walk-ins, uh, and uh, our primary care uh, providers all have that availability in their mm -hmm. office as well. You usually have to make an appointment mm -hmm. for that. Um, our colleagues in other systems have similar things, and uh, pharmacies have them as well. So really, uh, you know, we try to, as, as, a, as a medical community, try to make it so that it, there's really no excuse to not. Yeah. yeah, my pediatrician's office have walk-in. They just say, just, you know, show up and, uh, you know, we'll bring your daughter back or whoever. So, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of doctor's offices are like that, too. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, You're how right. do you feel, Terry? I feel really good. You had yours already. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was... I couldn't feel anything when the needle went in. And it's it was it's really, so simple. Yeah, really exactly. Easy. And there's not expected to be a shortage this year. Where are we at with that? No, the last time I checked on the CDC website, they have more than enough, and and they uh, deploy it sort of in a in a staged manner based on expectation and okay. and need and that sort of thing. So the last time I checked, which was in the last few days, everybody's right on target. Great. Okay. Well, thanks, Dr. Woods. We appreciate it. You're welcome, and thank thanks, you for Marcy. having me. Thanks, Yeah. Thanks for I giving your good. arm to the cause here. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to have my husband take me to dinner tonight though. I think so, your favorite place. Just to celebrate. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is 8 West.